All right, so story time. Uh, as we all know, nobody really knows what they're doing. You know, uh, say, for instance, adults, people in positions of authority, uh, no one really knows what they're doing. Everyone's just sort of muddling along, running out the clock. Go to work, do your job, come home. Everyone just sort of mills about and goes, uh, I guess this is the thing to be doing right now, right here. Um, <clears throat> and as such, it's pretty safe to say, I'm sure you'd all agree, that people in authority are rarely to genuinely be trusted since ultimately they're just fucking people um, and anything they say it's just the opinion of a person and is therefore not really well it's not scripture is it even if it is written down it's not it's not fucking biblical shit it doesn't matter it's uh ephemeral it can be lost to the wind like dust and sand and such a bunch of piss is what it is. A bunch of piss and nothingness. That's what people's opinions are. Piss and nothingness. A bunch of garbage. This was something. Uh, I remember a specific example of when I learned this fact. When something inside me just clicked. And I went, oh, I see. Everyone's fucking retarded. No one knows what they're doing. And therefore, don't fucking trust a single bloody one of them. Um, this happened when I was about the age of five or six, or thereabouts. And there is where our story today starts. Start. So, there I was, in school, at the, the ripe young age of about five or six, uh, somewhere around there. Um, my family moved around quite a few times when I was around that age. So I think I was new to this school. Hadn't been there for too long. Didn't really know anyone, didn't enjoy it. Uh, it was in what you might call a, a low-income area. Uh, so, you know, council houses and maybe somewhat less educationally inclined people otherwise known as fucking dunces that I was generally surrounded by. Chavs, if you will. Um, that was the, the people I was surrounded by. That was the sort of kids I happened to go to school with. That was the uh, socio-economic uh, environment in which I was raised. Uh, so it was the end of the school day. Get all these pointless details out of the way to fill time. Um, it was end of the, the end of the school day. We were cleaning up our classroom. Kids were running about all over the place, picking up paper and scissors and glue sticks or whatever the hecky heck it was they were using. Um, but again, I wasn't really interested. I didn't. I didn't know what I was doing there in general. I didn't like anyone there. So as far as I recall. I was walking around uh, with my hands in my pockets, I think, just scuffing my feet along the floor, like walking around looking busy-ish, uh, not picking my feet up, just sort of milling about, not paying attention to, you know, the people around me, the noisy, dumb children around me. Um, and then I came to the edge of a table, scuffling my feet along, when suddenly I felt my foot bump into something that was sort of midway between being hard and soft. I then heard a high-pitched squeal come from under the table, and then from under the table crawled out this boy called Matthew, um, who was one of a set of twins who were both, frankly, fucking idiots. Uh, I don't want to say they were inbred, but they were... And, you know, maybe they didn't come from a great home environment, but they were dumb as fucking mud. Both of them combined had an equal intelligence to that of one single sack of mud. That's how 
fucking intelligent these boys were. So, uh, evidently, my foot had bumped into Matthew's face. Uh, he was crawling under the table with his head very close to the floor. I guess he was picking up paper or I don't know, whatever. Um, he probably shouldn't have been crawling around like that under the tables. Uh, my, my scuffing feet, one of them had, I guess, hit him uh, between the nose and the upper lip, that sort of philtrum area. Um, gave him a bit of a knock with my hard black school shoes or whatever it was I was wearing. And he ran off crying, screaming to the teacher. Joy of joys. Um, so as I have said, uh, I was not surrounded by the brightest of people in this school. Uh, and I mean, that, I guess, where, where can I go with this bit? Uh, I was, I, okay, so my mum was called a few times because I was acting out now and again. Um, I can't remember exactly how I was acting out, like what exactly I was doing, but I guess it was just like maybe not doing my work, bumming off a bit, probably drawing when I shouldn't have been, shame on me. Um, and then, every, you know, everyone was irritated slash concerned. So my mum was called a few times and asked, you know, what's going on? What can be done with this problem child of yours? The conclusion we came to uh, was that more often than not, I'd finish my work in class, get very agitated because I finished it very quickly, much quicker than the other students. Um, and then I'd bum about. I'd draw or just fucking, I don't know, hum or make dinosaur. I don't know what the fuck I did, but I, I know I wasn't doing what I ought to have been doing. But they did surmise that, yes, in fact, he gets his work done very, very quickly, correctly and whatever else. Because, uh, again, I guess they were doing work for the, the average student there, which were just fucking dummies, as I said. That's sort of where that comes in. Um, so... I was not given special treatment. I remember my mum actually came in to sit in a few classes to make sure I was doing okay. Um, but they gave me extra like workbooks to take home and then I filled them out and got all the work done and stuff, brought them back and they were like, oh, he's very, very good. Um, so they came to the decision at one point to say, well, he obviously, you know, it goes without saying, he likes drawing, drawing and painting, creating art and such. So how about this? Once he's finished his work in class, he can go uh, and play in the art area. He can just go have his way with all the paints and the paper and the pens and sellotape and cereal boxes and such. So Ewan can do his work, then go, you know, play quietly in the art area on his own. And then, you know, he, he's not a disruption. He's not, uh, you know, sat around doing nothing he's actually doing a thing cool and i was thoroughly happy with that i was very very happy i thought like i'd been handed this fucking golden ticket of hey ewan fucking finish your work right quick and then you can go do some arty art i thought that was great um and then i did i did just that got all my work done and then went and did some art. And, as it happens, very similarly to how uh, very recently, you know, leaving my day job behind, and then given the sort of time and wherewithal to do so, I was able to create some really cool artwork and large amounts of artwork. And I did the same even back then. When I was given the time and, you know, left alone to do my thing, I created some cool, cool stuff. My brother at the time had these... Airfix aeroplanes, those plastic aeroplane models that you glue together and paint and stuff. Um, I wasn't allowed to play with them uh, because I was too young or whatever. Um, I'd probably just fucking end up eating the, the parts and sticking my fingers in the highly toxic enamel paint and then sucking the paint off my fingers like a fucking ninny. Um, I'm not saying I was a brilliant child. I was surrounded by dunces, or I certainly wasn't a genius. But uh, 
so I was very upset by that. But then, given the time in the art area after finishing my work, I remember I used to try and make little sort of like cardboard paper versions of the planes I saw that my brother had. Um, and then paint them up, and they came out really fucking cool. I mean, looking back, they were probably pieces of shit. But at the time, considering my age and everything, I think it was pretty cool. Uh, I made um, I made a puppet. I got like two of those small um, cereal boxes, the little mini cereal boxes. I uh, taped them on one side to make a hinge. They opened like a mouth. And I attached a paper straw to the upper one. So when I pulled it down, the upper box went up. So it opened the mouth. And I made a little body, like made a little dinosaur puppet thing. It was pretty fucking cool. And I, I was even given time because they obviously wanted to still include me in the lesson time. So I was given like my own kind of show and tell time after I'd made my artwork or whatever. They'd say, OK, now you and come up and show everyone what you made in your art time. And I'd be like, oh, today I made a plane. Today I made this puppet. Look, he talks. Wacka, wacka, wacka. Or whatever. Um, and it was cool for a little while. But then, I guess somewhere along the way, it was deemed, I guess, unfair that I'm the only one who gets to do that. So then they started extending the art time out for everybody else. So, you know, time for art was... was well, there was more time for art for all the other students as well. So then I'd be... You know, I'd finish my work, I'd go play art on my own and then uh, be cool for a little while and then suddenly the art area would start filling with other fucking little shitty snot-nosed idiot children. And I'd be like, oh... Well, this is shit. I want them all to go away and just leave me alone so I can get on with my fucking work. And it was ruined. Ladies and gentlemen, ruined. How dare they. Fucking pieces of shit. Which just goes to show they're a bunch of idiots is what I'm saying, basically. Uh, and that's, that's, again, that's not necessarily pertinent to the story at hand. It's just context of, you know, the larger piece of it all or what have you. So my foot hit this kid Matthew in the face, evidently. He runs off to the teacher. The teacher calls me over, of course as she's going to. Um, I guess Matthew, the, the fucking, that fucking guy, had said, Miss, miss, you and kicked me in the face. So I went over to the teacher when called, like a good little child. And the teacher said, Ewan, why did you kick Matthew in the face? I said, I didn't. Um... No, I didn't. That's a lie. I said it was an accident because I guess I did kick him in the face, but it was completely an accident. To which she replied, oh, you just accidentally or your foot accidentally flew up and kicked him in the face. She thought I'd fucking he was up and standing and I'd jumped up and fucking karate kicked him in the face as if I could get my leg up like that. And, you know, it was like malicious and I did it on purpose. I purposely fucking jumped up and booted this dumb shit of a kid in the face. He didn't go up to her and say, Miss, I was crawling around on the floor and Ewan's foot hit me in the face. He said, Ewan kicked me in the face. And, you know, all available evidence would suggest that's what happened. I tried to say he was on the floor... I was skidding my feet around. It was an accident. They collided, whatever. And she said, you can't go... You shouldn't kick people in the... How, how could you do this? This is a horrible, horrible thing to do. Why would you kick someone in the face? That's disgusting. I'm calling your mother. I'm... Um, and that's basically the story. I got in a shitload of trouble for kicking a kid in the face when I didn't kick a kid in the face at all. And it was literally that point... Something inside my head clicked and went, oh, oh, that's how it works. I get it. Okay. 
I understand this system right from that age, from like between five and six years of age sort of time. I figured it out. That's the way the system works. Doesn't matter if you're on the right or the wrong side. People are going to believe what they're going to believe. The people in authority are going to make the rules and what they say goes. And even if I had said, even if I fucking, I don't know, if I pulled up CCTV evidence, she'd have been like, well, still, you clearly weren't working, so you should have been working. And how could you do that? Like, fucking, you know, it, it, the, it still would have been against me because the person wouldn't have wanted to back down from their point, wouldn't want to have been proven wrong. You know, you can't have that, can't have a teacher proved wrong by a people. Um, and that pretty much continued throughout my entire life. The amount of times I've been blamed for shit I didn't do or, you know, blamed for doing shit I accidentally did or whatever. You know, I've had my fair share of incidents that I did on purpose and I got in trouble for, and rightly so. But also, a far greater share of being pissed on by these fucking idiots and morons I was fucking surrounded by and in fact I remember even a couple of years before that time uh, walking home from school with my mum and you know her saying oh how was your day and I'd say it was terrible I hate school I hate the environment I hate the people I hate the teachers I hate that they don't just leave me alone to fucking get on with what I'm doing I hate it, I hate it, I want to leave, I want to die. Um, and she'd say, oh, you know, you'll be fine, just keep at it. Ooh. I don't believe I actually said I want to die at that age, but you get the point, the premise is there, yeah? Um, so, yeah, from a very young age, I wasn't happy in the environment I was thrust into. I know nobody is, like, oh big whoop for you who you think I'm happy with I have to do, do it I know I know that's just how it goes but it's just like I say from childhood I was made only too aware that no one's on your side you have to be on your own side because no one's going to fucking fight for you uh, I fuck it. I didn't kick a kid. Why am I going to kick a kid in the face? He was an idiot. And frankly, if I could go back and legitimately kick him in, like if I could go back in time, with like you know the thoughts I've got now, or the brain I've got now, and the body I had then, knowing well I'm going to get in trouble either way, I would actively find him and kick him in the fucking teeth, just for being such a stupid little cunt. And he didn't help at all. Like, we weren't we weren't friends, but we weren't enemies. He had no reason to fucking, you know, get me in trouble on purpose or anything. He could have said to the teacher, ow, my lip is bleeding. And she'll go, what happened? Be like, oh, uh, I bumped into Ewan. It was an accident. These things happen. He said, Ewan kicked me in the face and didn't go against that point. When I was saying what actually happened he didn't say actually yeah that is what happened he said wee, wee, wee. Ooh, i'm a little pissy baby Ooh, wee, wee. me and my brother were dumb as fucking bricks and wee, wee, wee. fucking <sighs> not that i'm bitter about it at all but like i say it's just a fucking sign of of how shit goes isn't it that's how things work out here in this we call the world. How's it going? Terribly. Why? Because people are in charge of everything. And, you know, all oh, people are the worst. Yeah. Humans are the real virus. Whatever. They're just, like I say, everyone's trying to get along. Just do their own thing. No one cares about anyone else. You've got to save yourself because no one's going to do it for you. <laughs>